human interest thing. So we, we have to deal with distractions too. And I'm sure it'll happen again. So any other questions, comments? Yeah, there's, well, I guess there's two of them. Yeah, you're in the back. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was curious some of your thoughts about the new research on the idea of uh, secondary RFD for tornado genesis. Have you read any of that? I, he's, he's asking about the idea of the relevance of like secondary RFD surges. I, I think that we have to think of the RFD as not one continuous process. It's a whole series of pulses. If you start, like if you look at a cloud, what we call an updraft, all the little turrets and bubbly structure to it, you know, the, there's tremendous amount of small scale details there. And I don't think the roof line downdraft is any different. It, you see variations depending on slight changes in precipitation, density, and type. And, you know, if you look at radar loop of a storm, they don't just, aren't just rock steady. There's all sorts of crazy little changes. And if you imagine, and look at a tornado, multiple vortices, then it looks like it's one, it looks like it's intense, then it's weak. There's all sorts of stuff going on on a really small scale. And I think that stuff does matter. It's just the question is how do we observe it? And there are just so precious few observations down on, I mean, you're talking tens of meters that you have to observe things to kind of fish out those details. I, I think it matters, but there's just going to have to be more work done. And there, another question here. Any suggestions Well, the, uh, my, after being asked this question off and on for close to three decades, I've learned my lesson is to just try not to say too much. Because, so, the, I mean, the real answer, I know nobody wants to hear it, but I have no idea. The pattern right now sucks. I mean, it, it's been terrible. But because we're in a bad pattern now, it's February. It often looks pretty lousy in the winter. And just because we've been in it for several months probably increases the odds that we will get out of it at some point before the spring zone. What that's going to translate to in terms of tornado potential, I don't know. All I can tell you is if we keep interfering with the moisture return into the southern plains into March and April, it'll be a slow start. I I've learned to not say anything beyond even that. Because May, no earthly idea what's going to happen in May and June. And that's when a lot of, you that's when, well, all Rogers pictures, most of your money can be made, so to speak is well after anything that I could even have any hope of predicting. So I guess I'm going to sit at work and find out. So any other questions? Yeah. Do you have this presentation available either at a printout or online? Uh, I haven't put this one specifically online, but again with the uh, workshop stuff that we're doing in Norman on the side, there's a version of this that's actually going to be a little bit longer, and I show another case or two. We are going to make those available. So if you can, you can actually get that one instead of, I mean, we could put this one up specifically if you want, but yeah, there's no problem sharing the actual PowerPoint talk. Any other questions? Yeah, the question is, are there any clues in the cloud structure that the roof line down right there might be buoyant or not very resistant to that forced descent? Uh, in my experience, and this is where some of the tornado magnets could probably chime in a little more than me, there seems to be an eruption of the cloud material. It forms and rapidly ascends. In other words, it's not lazily ascending. You actually see sort of a raggedy appearance, and the cloud material is erupting vertically, not laminar. It doesn't look as laminar. I'm not saying it looks, you don't see bubbly towers per se, but you see an eruption of rapidly forming cloud material. It's usually coming in typical supercell from the north or the northwest side. And you see the little tail cloud feature, and that cloud material erupts up into the low level mesocycle and wall cloud and ascends rapidly. That's probably the best indication that that air is pretty buoyant. Any other questions? I think we're good. We probably went over time, but yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Ruth. That was absolutely outstanding. Okay, folks, we are going to take our lunch break now. It's going to be a little shorter because we do need to come back about 1 o'clock and uh, press on with the app.